Good morning students, I'm Mr. Buscherini and for our unit on motion today we're going to talk about speed time graphs. So a part of a series of videos regarding motion graphs in the previous lesson we have seen the case of distance time graph. Today we're going to start, as you can see, this is part one. And we're going to look at speed time graph and like we did with distance time graph we're going to see how to represent motion using speed time graph that means once you have a data make a graph of speed time and then read motion in a speed time graph that means being able to read a speed time graph so exactly as we did in the case of distance time graph we're going to see how uh, we can represent some simple cases uh, starting with the easiest one, uh, the case when you have an object which is not moving, so it's a speed equal to zero. Now, if you remember, in a distance time graph, you this kind of motion was represented by a flat line, a line parallel to the x-axis, which I remind you once again, in uh, both cases of motion graphs, as always, the timeline. So the timeline is a horizontal line. Now, in this case, it's not simply a flat line. It has to be a flat line which goes along the x-axis because now we have what does no movement? What does it mean an object which is not moving? It means as a speed which is always equal to zero. But in this case, v equals zero is over here. So this is the line represented by an object which is not moving. On the other hand, if you have an object which has a positive speed, a positive constant speed, in that case you will have again a flat line, but it will be a flat line above the x-axis. As you can see here, this uh, purple line represents a constant speed, which we will call v1. Okay, it means every second, every minute, every hour, the speed stays the same. How about this orange line? Again, this orange line represents a motion with constant speed, and we'll call this V2. But what we can say of V2 compared to V1? We can say that V2 is greater, is bigger than V1, because it's always constantly above. You might want to think, okay, but what if the speed is negative? And I want you, to, again, to pause this video for a second, just to think. What if the speed is negative? Where does that, or how is that represented? And of course, we'll be represented by a line which goes below here. Now, now, right now, I only have an axis, an axis for positive speed. But here you will have a line down here to represent a, ne a constant negative speed. In a fashion which is similar to what we've seen with distance time graphs, now we can say what happens if we have a constant acceleration. Now, constant acceleration means that you're increasing your speed by the same amount every given unit of time. Let's say you increase, for instance, if you have um, an acceleration of 2 meters per second squared, what does that mean? It means that your speed is increasing by steps of 2 meters per second every second. In a graph, this will represent a straight line, okay? Especially if you're starting from zero, speed equals zero, you'll have a straight line. So any straight line like this one will represent a constant acceleration. Remember, in a distance time graph, a line like this would have represented a constant speed. So how about the case when you have two different accelerations? You can see them here. This red line, we will call this A1, and this green line, we will call this A2. And I can already say that this green line represents a bigger acceleration. And we can, again, use a, a, a reasoning which is very similar to what we did with distance time graphs. No? So, at a given time, if you have two objects which start at the same time and with zero speed, and then they start accelerating, which one is accelerating more? Well, you just have to look a little bit later on which one has the greatest speed. So this is the time, and it's the same for both, but this is the speed for the red line, it's down here, and this is the speed for the green line. So it's obviously 
this has a bigger uh, acceleration. And again, what is the main difference? Is the slope. The slope is giving you the difference in acceleration. And talking about slopes, what does a line with a negative slope, a, a straight line that goes down like this, represent? It represents, obviously, an object which is decreasing the speed over time. Again, we can call this acceleration, but remember, we can be more precise and say that this is a negative acceleration or a deceleration or a retardation. These are all synonyms, okay? But again, a straight line going down, decrease the speed means a negative acceleration. As you can see here, A less than zero. And at this point, I already hinted uh, a result which is exactly like the one we found for distance time graphs. So, let's remember again how we find the slope of a line in uh, an XY graph. Now, the slope of a straight line is given by a rise of a run. So, how much you go up divided by how much you go across. So, that means we will divide by the x variable. But in this case, the y variable is not the distance, it is the speed. Well, the x variable is always the time. But what is speed? Actually, I should be more precise here. What is the change of speed over time? That's correct. That's the definition of acceleration. So, in a, in a fashion very similar to what we said previously, in a speed time graph, the slope, also known as the gradient of a line, is numerically equal to the acceleration. So let, let's stop for a second and think what kind of information we can take from a speed time graph. We can, of course, get the time traveled. We can get the speed at, at, at a given point, And we get also the acceleration. In the next video, you will see that we can actually extract also the information about distance traveled. Okay, let's finish this uh, lesson by looking on how to analyze, let's say, a complex uh, speed time graph. And you can see already this shape here, the trapezoid, this is very, very common in every physics textbook. When they introduce speed time graphs, they always have something like this, like a trapezoid. So, like we did in the exercise for distance time graph, we're going to break up our motion in three parts. We're going to see from I to B, and then from B to C, and finally from C to D. So, let's start from, with the uh, part from A to B. Now, uh, the time taken from A to B is from 0 to 3 seconds, so it's 3 seconds. information. The initial speed, u, remember, u is the symbol for initial speed, and that is clearly zero. And that is the speed in b, which is six meters per second. And now we can use these three quantities, v, u, and t, to calculate the acceleration. I'll li really leave it to you how you use these numbers to get our final result, which is two meters per second squared. That is the acceleration from a to b. From B to C, we have a flat line. And as we said previously, a flat line in a speed time graph means a constant speed. And how much is this constant speed? It is 6. So, for this amount of time, we have, which is 4 seconds, not from 3 seconds to 7 seconds, that is 4 seconds, uh, we have a constant speed of 6 meters per second. But if this speed is constant, I mean, you can do uh, the calculation yourself, or you can just write, the acceleration is zero, zero meters per second squared from C to D. You can see we have, again, a straight line, a straight line going down. And if you remember what we've seen a few minutes ago, this means a negative acceleration. Indeed, we have a speed which goes from a value up here in C all the way to a value of zero. First of all, how long is this part here of a journey? It's six seconds. And we have an initial speed, which is six meters per second, a final speed, which is zero. And now you can work out your math. And not surprised, if you do zero minus six, 
is minus 6 divided by 6 you'll get an acceleration of minus 1 meters per second squared in the next lesson as I told you we're going to learn also how to find the distance traveled but for now that's all goodbye from Mr. Boscarini